My name is Paul Wolliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products. And this is the installation instruction video for the extended run fuel kit for the generators that use the RATO, which would be the R-A-T-O 79.7 cc engine. That would include the Predator 2000, the Power Horse 2000, the WEN 2250, and some other generators that I don't remember the exact make and model of right off the top of my head. However, when you watch the video, you'll understand. Um, these generators all use the exact same engine. In fact, there's very, very little difference in the generators at all, other than we'll say that the, the Predator is red, the Power Horse is blue, the WEN is uh, kind of a yellowish color. Uh, if you've got any of the three of those, you'll recognize that the generator is laid out the same, the cabinet is the same. Uh, the WEN does have a separate door to be able to check the oil level, uh, but that's about it. Um, I will be putting this video together using seg segments of different assemblies and so on, and I'll choose based on which one has the best uh, video and the best audio quality. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. The first step is going to be to remove the two side panels. The side panels are just held on with Phelps head screws. It's pretty straightforward and simple. Then you'll pull out at the top, and these buttons go into these two grommets to snap it in, and these hooks go on at the bottom, and I'll cover that when I reinstall it. This side is held on three identical screws. This particular generator has my uh, remote shut off. That's why this hole is here. And if you're interested in my remote shut off, watch the instruction video for it. And it explains what this hole is here for. Uh, this side unsnaps the same way. There's a recoil start rope on this one. You don't need to clip the rope off. I'm going to simply because it's going to make it easier to shoot the video. No other reason than that. I'm just going to use a pair of forceps so that it doesn't try to pull that up against it. Okay. So now if you come over to the uh, side of the generator opposite the recoil, There's a breather hose that runs from the valve cover to the intake. Cut the small zip tie that holds the wiring harness that goes to the throttle stepper motor to the breather hose. Then remove the breather hose from both ends. Then there's a little elbow fitting that plugs into a hole in the intake manifold or in the uh, intake boot. You'll remove that and set it aside. First thing to install is there's a rubber plug that comes in the kit. And I don't know if you can see clearly on the video, but here is where you're going to install it right where the uh, elbow fitting came out of. And that's just a rubber plug so that you don't have an intake leak. The next step is going to be to remove the valve cover. Some of the Predators have a PCV valve in them 
Some of them do not. So the ones with the PCV valve, we have to remove the PCV valve from them. To remove the PCV valve, you take the valve cover off, and that's held in place by four bolts, one at each corner. Then undo the spark plug cap and just tuck it up out of the way. That just makes it easier to get the valve cover off. Notice I did not say easy, just less difficult than it would be. What we're going to do is we're going to take the valve cover, we're going to push it up into this area and then pull it out this way. It is a very tight fit. The easiest way to do this is to shove your fingers behind this black plastic webbing here and brace your thumb against the carburetor so you can push and get yourself a gap. And pull the valve cover out. Now, You'll notice this is the valve cover that came off of the engine. Some of them are going to come with this valve cover. I don't have any serial numbers or anything like that. If you've been to Harbor Freight and asked questions there, you understand how little the people working behind the counter actually know. It is likely that if the valve cover is a rough casting, looks almost like it was sand cast, that it does not have a PCV valve. you notice you look in here and you see the screening behind it. You blow in the end of it, air goes in one way, or air can go in here and back out here. On this one, you can see the PCV valve, and if you blow in it, you're not going to get air both directions. So, what we're going to do is remove the PCV valve. The way to do that take out these three screws You notice the plate or breather plate for the PCV valve has a gasket all the way around here. There are also two recessed areas. The reason is that there's going to be oil flying all over in that engine. And a mixture of air and oil will be blown into the breather or in through the breather plate and through the PCV valve into this area here. And they want the oil to run back down into the engine area. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend the PCV valve with a pair of needle nose pliers. So we're just going to push up on it. I'm going to hold it with my fingernail and I'm going to get the piece or the needle nose pliers and I'm just going to bend it back.
so that now the PCV valve stays open. So now it'll function just like this one, which did not have a PCV valve in it. We'll go ahead and put the breather plate back into the top of the, the valve cover. get each of these screws started. So now we have the shiny valve cover with no PCV valve in it, the same as the, the uh, rough or sand cast one. As I stated earlier, since I don't have serial numbers, I will say that it is likely that if you have a rough or sand cast looking valve cover, it is likely you do not have a PCV valve in it. If you have the shiny or smooth finished, it is likely that you do have a PCV valve in it. Uh, if I get any serial numbers or anything like that from the Predator people to tell me which ones do or do not, I will go ahead and post that information on my website or update the video, whichever. But at this time, I have no hard numbers as to which serial number sequences use a PCV valve and which ones do not. Now on this one, you notice that the valve cover gasket stayed on the head. If the valve cover gasket sticks to the valve cover or partially sticks to the valve cover, trust me, it's easier to put it back together with the valve cover gasket in this recessed area in the cylinder head. It just, it works a lot easier. If the valve cover gasket gets torn, the kit will come with a replacement valve cover gasket. You'll notice that the valve cover gasket says Yamaha. That's because Predator does not have them available yet. And yes, this engine is a copy of the Yamaha engine. And you'll notice that the valve cover and the valve cover gasket match up perfectly. Again, like I said, that's because the Predator is a copy of the Yamaha engine. And we'll put it back in pretty much the opposite of the way we took it out. We'll slide it up into the top and then we'll try to agitate it and wiggle it back down into place where it goes. It's not super easy, but it is possible. And again, what I'm going to do is hook two fingers or four fingers behind this and push on the carburetor, which will move the engine over slightly. And give me just a little bit of room to work in. And there the valve cover is back in place. And now we put all the four screws in.
you'll have to hold this little piece of rubber gasket out of the way because you don't want any of it pinched between the head of the valve cover bolt and the cylinder head. We're just going to run them all down and then we'll go back and snug them. cap and we can go ahead and plug that back into the top and that's it for the PCB valve I'm double check all these bolts on this engine we did not wind up using the valve cover gasket that came in the kit. So you can save the valve cover gasket for later on when you do a valve adjustment. Okay. Then there's a fuel line that runs from the fuel selector valve to the float bowl of the carburetor. And I'm going to remove both ends of it. It just makes it a lot easier to reinstall so there's a Corbin clamp, and I'll show you how the Corbin clamp works when we get it out of there completely. And then over on this side is the other end of the hose, and there's a Corbin clamp on this. Okay. The way a Corbin clamp works is you simply squeeze on the two uh, tabs, and the clamp opens up. There's a Corbin clamp on each end of the stock fuel line. Okay. The kit comes with everything you're going to need except for the fuel tank itself. The reason I don't use or send a fuel tank itself is a twofold issue. Number one, you'd be paying to ship a box of air across the country. And number two, no two customers seem to want the same exact size remote fuel tank. Uh, I do recommend the Marine. Uh, above deck fuel tanks. They sell them in a 3 gallon, 6 gallon, 12 gallon, just about any size you'd want. For this small of a generator, a 6 gallon is probably going to hold enough fuel to run as long as you'd like. I believe this generator would run a, at least 24 hours, possibly 40 hours on a uh, 6 gallon remote tank. But the first thing is there's a fuel pump and it is going to go in this location right here. Uh, you can see I put a piece of white tape to mark where we're going to be drilling a hole later on. But the fuel pump is going to be mounted with this side facing into the engine right in this location. And truth be known, you don't actually have to drill the hole that we're going to drill and run a bolt through it because the hoses will actually hold this fuel pump in place nicely. section of quarter inch rubber hose. The first step is going to be to cut a 14 inch section. And this is going to go from the spigot on the valve cover where the breather hose used to go. and just make sure the hose goes all the way on to where it butts up against the valve cover.
There are about a dozen hose clamps included in the kit. First hose clamp will go right onto the new breather hose. Truth be known, you don't need a clamp right here because it's only moving air. But if we put a clamp on it, it doesn't fall off later on as the generator is running. These clamps are actually very easy to use. You just put it around the hose, take a pair of pliers, and squeeze on it. If you need to undo the clamp, you simply twist sideways. I say that like it was easy. Simply twist sideways, maybe with a pair of pliers. Next thing we're going to do is cut a 17 inch section of hose. This will be the fuel line that goes from the carburetor to the fuel pump. Just run it under the air box and then back up. And as you remember where you removed the uh, stock fuel line that went from the fuel selector valve to the carburetor, is where this one is going to reconnect onto the carburetor at. The spigot. We're going to push it all the way on. And then we're going to put one of the hose clamps on that. I'm going to spin it around to where I start it right here. Just get it one click. And then slide it up. And then squeeze it in place. Jane, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. That hose just runs around under the air box. Ultimately, that hose is going to go onto this spigot from the fuel pump. In fact, we can go ahead and do that now. And the, uh, the ports on the fuel pump are, are labeled. This one has a P as in pulse port. This one has an arrow pointing in as in fuel goes in here. This has an arrow pointing out as in fuel goes out of here and onto the carburetor.
next step is going to be to assemble the fuel input line. So we cut a section of hose seven inches long, another section of hose seven inches long, and the last section of hose nine inches long. And you got a little bit of hose left over to throw away. Interesting thing is, on one of my other videos, I think it was a Yamaha 6300, I actually had a guy call up and let me know that there was a problem because he did not have as much hose left over to throw away. I'm not sure why he called me to inform me of that, but that's a true story because you just can't make things like that up. Okay, so what I've done is taken one of the 7 inch sections of hose, the T fitting that's included in the kit, and then another 7 inch section of hose. And we'll put hose clamps on here. Then included in the kit is a fuel filter. And then the 9 inch section of hose. Then we'll take the stock fuel hose that we removed earlier, and it has two protective sleeves on it. But as you know, this end hooks onto the fuel selector valve, so this end is going to hook on to this fuel hose, and we'll use the stock Corbin clamps that came with the kit for this hose because it is a thinner wall construction. So now this end will go to the fuel pump, this end will go to the fuel selector valve, and this end will go to their remote tank. So what we're going to do is feed it most likely easier to feed it through from the other side. I don't know if you could see clearly though. Do you have your flashlight in case you need to, to see it? I'm going to go ahead and feed this through. You notice that there's a choke cable. I'm going to feed it between the in front of the choke cable. Underneath the fuel hose that we installed. And then this end is going to tuck right over here, and it's going to go to the input port eventually here. So come back over to this side, and we're going to take the fuel hose. We're going to tuck it behind this. Now this kit, as I stated earlier, has my remote shutoff installed also. And this is the battery pack for my remote shutoff. So it will fit even with my remote shutoff installed. There's just more room without it. But the fuel filter is going to lay right behind the battery for the fuel shut off. Now you take the stock fuel hose and put it back on to the port for the fuel selector valve. You can see where my finger is pointing to.
just squeeze the corbin clamp and work it back on. Now if you'll notice, there's a metal bracket right here. Slide the first rubber uh, protector to where it goes right where the, the metal bracket is. And that way if there is any uh, touching, it doesn't chafe the fuel line up. The other section, slide it as close to the T-fitting as you can get it. Uh, with my kit installed, this hose does not run near the, uh, the recoil start rope where it did in a stock position. So we don't need this extra uh, protective sleeve, but we're going to leave it on there anyway. Okay. So now with the fuel pump, we're going to take the fuel input hose and we'll slide it onto this port. And then we'll put a hose clamp on that. And as you can see, that was the top port when the fuel pump is installed or in position where it is going to be installed eventually. Okay, then the last hose is the uh, pulse port or breather line and it started at the valve cover and it's going to go on to the last of the three ports on the fuel pump. And remember this hose is just moving air, not fuel. And then we'll put a, uh, a clamp on this hose. As I mentioned earlier, this hose is only moving air, not fuel. This is a pulse pump. It's operated by pressure and vacuum in the crankcases. That's why this one is moving air and no fuel. Okay. I'm just going to make sure none of our hoses are kinked or anything like that. Okay. Now if you come over here this is the uh, inspection plug or spark plug access plug and here is the inlet hose. What we're going to do is three quarters of an inch away from the inner edge and you can feel what you're working with here. In fact, let's lower it a little bit. We're going to drill a hole right here three quarters of an inch in from the edge of the uh, spark plug access hole. We don't want to go too far under the handle because there's a fuel tank running right through here. So if we go toward this mount bracket, is where we want to end up. I know that it doesn't show up well on the camera, but three quarters of an inch from this edge out.
Incidentally, you can either drill this hole to a half inch, or if you've got a 9 16 drill bit, then you can drill it all the way to a 9 16 But if you drill it with a half, then you can take a burring tool and just carve it out just a little bit larger so that the uh, fuel fitting will fit in it. So next what you do is take the Teflon tape that's included in the kit and wrap it around the threads of the fuel fitting. Be very careful when you do this. I'll show you why. When you're wrapping the Teflon tape, and I'm going to start it a little bit here, do not wrap over the edge like that because then when you screw the fuel fitting on, it will cut this piece and then you'll have that piece of debris in the fuel line. Now, truth be known, yes, I do have a fuel filter in it, but let's not clog up the filter unnecessarily. So we'll wrap the Teflon tape around the threads and get a few turns of Teflon tape on it and then just tear it off. Included in the kit is a hose barb, and that's what the hose or fuel fitting screws into on the other side. Now, the two halves of the brass, because it is pipe thread, will start to bind tight against each other before it really gets tight against the plastic, which is what we want. And we don't want any fuel leakage. And ultimately, I like to face the fittings forward, because that way the fuel line runs forward over the front of the generator. If you face it backward, you're going to have the fuel line running down the back of the generator, where it's going to be blowing hot exhaust on it. So that's why it needs to face forward. So just make sure when you end up that your fuel connector faces the front of the generator and not the back. Once you get it tightened down, then you can tear off the uh, extra piece of uh, Teflon tape. When I wind the Teflon tape, I put my thumb over the end of it so that it doesn't slide out. Now I'm going to slide one more hose clamp over this section of hose, then I'm going to slide this section of hose up onto the hose barb that we just got through installing. Okay, now we can take the fuel pump and put a bolt in here, but as you can clearly see, the fuel pump's not going anywhere.
This is a quarter inch drill bit and there's a quarter inch bolt included in the kit. I do not include a flash washer or flat washer in the kit because a flat washer won't fit inside this little recessed area and we're not going to be putting a lot of torque on it. We're just going to put the nut always keep a magnet around put the nut on the back side of this bolt and then we'll tighten the bolt down a little bit Now there's a clear plastic hose that goes from the uh, float bowl vent. If you push the clear plastic hose out of the way, just make sure that it ends up right back in this fitting. right here and that's just in case the uh, float bowl overfills that way the gasoline drains out to the bottom of the generator okay so now what we're going to do is put the cabinets back on we'll start on this side this particular kit had one of my uh, wireless remote shutoffs installed. When I was putting the fuel filter in, I knocked this plug out. So just make sure that the battery is plugged in if you have one of my wireless remote shutoffs. Uh, if you clamp this, remove the, the clamp from it. Then pay close attention to make sure that, like on this one, the fuel line is way inside of the uh, recoil start rope. You just don't want the recoil start rope rubbing against the fuel line or the, the wire from my battery, and in this case it's well in the clear. You'll take the three, same three screws that you took out them in. Come back around to this side. 
Remember the very first thing you did was cut the zip tie that held the wiring harness for the throttle stepper motor to the breather line. Included in the kit, there are about a half a dozen zip ties. You'll use one of them here. And the others are just for tidying up the area in case you had to move something or cut any other zip ties or if you want them for some other project down the road. Now we're ready to put this cover back on. You'll just make sure to get these tabs slid into these slots here. And then these snap onto these and then the buttons plug into the grommets. Basically you just slide it down and then push. your kit it'll be out of the box I strongly encourage you if you do replace the fuel hose at any time go with the genuine Yamaha fuel hose the aftermarket hoses have a tendency to leak uh, right where they snap on the o-rings on the aftermarket ones are not very good uh, because of the fact this is only an 80 cc or excuse me 79 and a half cc engine it does not produce a strong enough pulse wave to create a strong suction so any uh, any air leak it's going it's to suck air in you'll never see fuel leaking out but if it sucks air in through the fittings the kit won't work it'll be sucking air in instead of sucking fuel uh, the genuine Yamaha fuel hoses take care of that that's why my kit includes the genuine Yamaha fuel hoses just uh, if you're ever replacing it in the future here's the part number you can either buy it at a Yamaha dealer or purchase it from me the next thing is the kit will include an additional quick disconnect fitting. That'll screw into the top of your remote fuel tank. If you've already got one, that's great. If you don't have one, then uh, here in Florida, even the local Walmart sells them. Otherwise, Bass Pro Shops or uh, just about any boat dealer sells uh, plastic above ground fuel tanks or above deck fuel tanks, or you can get them off the internet. For that size generator, uh, a six gallon is about as large as you need. And that concludes the installation. Uh, 